How's it going everybody? So we're in my attic once again and I'm going to be installing another antenna. Um, hopefully this one will replace the dipoles that I have up here. It's called the uh, Broadband Butterfly Terminated Dipole. And um, theoretically this antenna is supposed to have a uh, under 2 to 1 SWR from 1.8 to 54 megahertz. Now I installed it yesterday as a test to see if it would work and it really does work and I even I'll throw up a, a picture of uh, the reverse beacon network here in a minute of the test I did yesterday. So today I'm actually going to install it a little bit more permanent version of it and I'll uh, see how it looks. So um, I don't know if I'll videotape all of it but uh, I don't have a tripod up here and the lighting's horrible so I'll get to it and uh, show you all what it's going to look like and um, uh, this is what I'm going to be installing. This part right here is the um, uh, 16 to 1 current type Balin uh, and it's rated for uh, you know, uh, one and a half um, kilowatts uh, on SSB, and um, you know I've only got a hundred watt um, radio downstairs. So this is where I got it. You can go there and um, check them out if you want to. There's the part number. Let's hold that there in case anybody's interested. But I'll also put a link in the description. So the feed point is right here, and uh, the each end of the dipole comes off of here. Now. Each leg of this dipole goes around to this 1200 ohm resistor. And uh, this is the terminator portion of it. This is good for 300 watts SSB from the same frequency range, more, more or less. So and when you look at it like this, so this leg is going to come to get one side and this leg of the antenna is going to come to the other side. And uh, I'll throw up a diagram um, that, that they have on their website. On uh, how this antenna looks in the attic. And it, you can put it around the house, anything. The only stipulation is each of these legs that come off of here. Um, so this leg should be the same length within six feet of this leg, depending on how big your house is. And it's... it's uh, I, I'm sure that there's a trade-off as far as performance goes with this, but um, the test I did yesterday were pretty promising. So um, without further ado, let me get started and I'll show you uh, a little bit of clips along the way as I get uh, through the installation. the other end and uh, I'll back up a little bit so it's good the lighting is horrible because the sun's coming through but as you can see I've got a um, uh, an attic fan temperature controlled attic fan up here that's down by the window so I had to I put this up as low but as high as I could get it also so if you can see here it's uh, the antennas coming in and uh, here we go so how I did this is this is the 1200 ohm resistor it's hanging by about I don't know, probably 30 inches of uh, cord going up there to that post. And one leg of this goes up this way, right to there. That's about 36 inches to some, uh, it's just a plastic cap off an old cat litter box. We don't have a cat anymore. She passed away a couple of years ago, but these cat litter buckets are perfect for everything. So I took the lid off and cut this into strips. So these are these are perfect insulators. And I just put barely screwed it into the wood there. And it goes down to that corner right there. And uh, I don't know if you can see that right there. And then it goes up the length of the attic behind all of that to the other corner. And then it goes up and we'll walk over there where you saw it previously. So let's just walk over here. This is the corner. Half of this stuff is my son's, two of my son's <laughs> piled up here that they don't seem to want. So it comes up to the other plastic insulator over there in the corner. It comes up to another one here. And this one actually comes all the way down below the window to the feed point. And it's both sides. And uh, yeah, it went fairly well, the installation. The um, Man, the lighting sucks up here. Whew. Let me go over here somewhere. So, man, the lighting is so bad up here. But anyway, I got it done, and uh, 
The hardest part for me is um, these areas down here is really low. You gotta get on my knees. And when you get my age, man, getting on your knees, there's nothing fun about it. So I'm gonna hook up the feed point. I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna hook up the uh, my rig expert antennalizer to it. And we're gonna check the SWR all the way from uh, 160 to six meters to see how it looks. I know how it looked yesterday and uh, I'll show you how it looks today. And uh, maybe we'll do some uh, test CW signals to see what the reverse beacon break network comes up with. So um, stay tuned. All right, so here we are, moment of truth. Downstairs, I got the feed line hooked right into the um, um, antenna analyzer. And um, we'll go through each of the bands here and I'll show you each of the frequency bands. But if I just go to frequency, and since this only goes up to 30 megahertz, I'll go ahead and put 15 megahertz in it. Okay, and I'll set the range for 15 megahertz. So this will cover the entire range that this uh, meter is capable of doing. And I'll check OK. Now watch this SWR. Here we go. As you can see here, it never got above two. Never got above two. The sweet spot on that antenna up there appears to be down in, uh, let's see, right there, about 12.45 megahertz, which is um, nothing that I'll ever be using, right? But it doesn't matter. Everything else is two or below. And so now if I just go back to frequency, and we'll start at, um, we'll start at the uh, 160 meter band, and I'll go, I'll go to 1.9 megahertz. So it'll be zero, one, nine megahertz. And we'll check this. All right, it's two to one. And um, it's not horrible, but it could be a lot better at that frequency. But you know, that's a, that's a tough band if you don't have um, the, the room for that type of antenna, but still it's a usable frequency. Um, so now let's go to, we'll go to about 3.75. Okay. And it's 1.8, the SWR right here. So, you know, so now we got the, um, 80 meter band. I don't do anything on 60 meters, but um, we'll go there anyway. I'll go to 5358. Five, 1.6 is the SWR. We'll drop down to 40 meters. I'll go 7175, middle of the band. That's 1.18. So that'll work there. Let's go to 30 meters. I'll go to uh, 10, 125. 1.48. So it's 1.5 to 1, basically. And now let me go to um, 20 meters. We'll go to 14, 175. SJBR is 1.6. Let's go down to 17 meters. I'll go to 18. We'll just go down to 18, 120. SWR is 1.8. One thing I failed to mention upstairs was that each leg of that antenna is roughly 66 feet long based on my measurement using my stressed out arms. So around, I guess, 66 feet each, each side. All right, let's get back to it. So now we are um, gonna check 15 meters. So I'll go to 21, 250. One point three to one. So now let's go to, um, we'll go to the 12 meter band. Um, we'll just go, we'll just check in the midpoint where the CW and the SSB stop. So that'd be 24,930. 1.6 to one. So let's drop down to um, 10 meters. Uh, let's see here, I will go to, um, What's the midway point here? 28, let's we'll go to 29, let's we'll go to 29. Let's 
two to one, two point one to one. It's not good, still usable. Now I can't check the six meter band because this doesn't go to that frequency, but as you can see, whoa, look at that glare coming in. But as you can see, that antenna is usable on all the frequencies. Now I don't know um, how, how much power I'll be able to get out of it, uh, but it, it is, I can use it on all those frequency bands. It's, it's a compromised antenna, just like everything else we use. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'll probably tune on the 703 and just send some basic uh, test CWs uh, just to see what the reverse beacon network comes up with. And I'll show you, I'll share the ones from last night as well because uh, you know some of these frequency bands are useless during the day and some of them are useless at night. So I'll show you everything I've done since I've had this antenna in the attic. So I'll be back later on guys if I don't end this video. Mm -hmm.